before we came here. I mean, we just never lived, well, what you'd say, close enough to us, or we just never were around them, really. Isn't that part I mean, of what makes it difficult when you live 15 or 17 years of your life and then start doing something different all of a sudden? Well, I think, like, if a, a Spanish or a Chinese person came here, it wouldn't be hard to get along with them. It's just that the Negroes are, what you might say, more different to us than a Spanish person might be. Do you think the Negro students ever will get in here? I think they'll get in here, but I don't know how long they'll live after they do get in here. That's my honest opinion. I'm talking to you in my honest opinion. Because they cannot keep the police out here always. I don't think they've got any business in here to start with. Well, what if the president brings in federal troops? I don't think the president has, the, the, under the Constitution, the president has any authority to send in federal troops unless our governor asks for it. They're taking all of the state rights away from the states when they do a thing like that. That's only my opinion of it. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the television and radio audience. In view of the decisions I have made, I think it is well to review for the people of this state and the nation, some of the background in the tense situation which has now developed relative to the forcible integration of the public schools of Little Rock. Telephone calls have come to me at the mansion in a constant stream, and the expressions of all are the fear of disorder and violence and of the harm that may occur on the morrow in this attempt at forcible integration of Central High School. Yes, and uh, are you going to offer these children any special measures of protection inside or outside the school as superintendent of schools? We offer them the same protection we do all other students. Are you confident that you will be able to deliver a day's education to all the students at Central High starting on Monday? We are most hopeful of that. We What's this all about? Well, certain groups have voiced their opinions that uh, the school should be reopened even if it's on an integrated basis. And we just think that we still have the majority of the people behind us back and for us in one segregated school. Yeah. Keep the school closed and open it integrated, right? We're willing to leave them closed a little bit longer if Forbes can help us, and we think he can. You're pinning everything on him? Yes. Yeah. You're getting most of the kids in all the high schools feel this way? Yes, sir! Yeah. Do you think you can, uh, do you think you can... Uh, <laughs> suppose, this, suppose this were a long fight. Suppose it meant no school for a year. You still feel the same way? How do you feel about having the non-Negroes there? Well, they really haven't done any harm to me especially, but I'd rather have it not going to school with them. It doesn't seem like there's much that we can do right now. Have any of you talked with the Negroes? Oh, and Jim, uh, they've been very friendly to me, but we haven't talked, discussed this problem. They just talk about their uh, activities or something like that. You mean some of the white children do talk to them? Yes, and, and Jim, uh, there are two girls. Uh, two Negro girls in my class, and we talked to them, but not about the problem at school. You may it completely work. You may have heard that some of the boys who walked out this morning came across the street and hung up a an effigy of a Negro on a tree and set fire to yeah, it. Yeah. Right over here. Now, how do you feel about that? I think that's all uncalled for. It certainly is. I mean, you can... I just want to say, you know, can we, can we all get along? Can we can we get along? Um, can we stop making it making it horrible for for the for the older people and the and the and the. Mm mm mm. Hey Esau, you got some explaining to do, right? Huh. First and foremost, giving all praise, honor, and glory to the heavenly Father. And his only begotten son, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Rekakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone, of whom I learn from daily. And a healthy shout of welcome to the brothers that are out there doing the work in truth and sincerity. Also to the speckled bird that's going to come looking like other nations. Shout of to you. 
All right, hey, this is the brother Gabar Dama coming back at you. GMS Gabar Dama, shall I say. You know, coming back at you with another lesson here. You saw that. Hey, that, that people act like, everybody acts like it was such a long time ago. You know, and they act, they act like uh, everything's changed and everybody's free now. And, we, and, there, and there's cupcakes and Skittles everywhere. And we all joining hands. And, and, and we are, uh, you know, the Rodney King Israelites, right? <laughs> Can we all just get along? The answer is no. And we never have been able to, as the scriptures say. You know, even I remember uh, uh, watching videos of um, Jake in the 70s, you know, where they got a little scratch, if you will. You know, that's, that's old school for money. You know, got a little got a little wealth, if you, if you will. And really, true wealth is, uh, is slavery. But anyway, you know, back in the 70s and this is the 70s. Some of these people are still alive. And, you know, they act like this was them like in, in, in uh, 16, uh, 72 or something. No, it's still happening. They've they've ne they've never changed. The scripture said there's no new thing under the sun. Anyway, when uh, little Jake, little girls was riding their bicycles and stuff, and Edomites are spitting on them and kicking them, call them niggas. Get out of our neighborhoods. We don't want you here. This and that. Blah blah blah. You know they would they used to uh they would fill up swimming pools with concrete just so Jake couldn't use them. Redlining, you know, uh, what was that? The black, uh, Black Wall Street, all kinds of different things. All right, and t yet to this day they still do it. They got you, Jake's packed up in what they call ghettos, right? And if you look into the entomology of the word, it means a place where Jews dwell. Huh? Isn't that interesting? Anyway, I, I won't keep rambling on, but you know, uh, and it's and, it, and then, then what do they really teach you in the school system? They teach you white supremacy, so-called white. That's what they teach you. They teach you that uh, that this Edomite discovered this and this Edomite discovered that. Well, how are you going to discover some shit when there's somebody already there? It's a bunch of damn devils, man. And their anger did tear perpetually, right? Let's read about it. Amos 1 and verse 6. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, for three transgressions of Gaza and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof. Because they did carry away captives, the captive, the whole captivity, to deliver them up to Edom. You see that? And these Hamites, they don't get a pass neither. These Ishmaelites, they don't get a pass. Elam don't get a pass. Moab, Ammon, they don't get a pass. Gog and Magog don't get a pass. Nobody gets a pass. You know, nobody, no one. Verse seven. But I will send a fire on the wall of Gaza, which shall devour the places thereof. And I will cut off the inhabitant from Ashdod. Woo. And him that holdeth the scepter from Ash, uh, uh, Ash uh, Kilan. <laughs> and I will turn my hand against Ekron and the remnant of the Philistines shall perish. Save the Lord our power. Yahweh. Okay. These people, none of these people are going to get away with it. As the scripture said, Salakia. All right. Wow. Thus saith the Lord, your for three transgressions of Tyrus and for four, I will not turn away the. All right. Salakia for that. I got rudely interrupted yet again. Anyway, Amos 1 of verse 9. Thus saith the Lord, your for three transgressions of Tyrus and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof because they delivered up the whole captivity to Edom. Esau eat them, okay? <clears throat> and remember not the brotherly covenant. See that? They remember not the brotherly covenant, man. They did. They kept. The, they keep their anger forever. And then they got the nerve. They got the nerve to say this and say that. Now, uh, uh, your life is going to change after 18 years of living here. What, what about the uh, uh, indigenous population? You know, what about the northern kingdom? Hmm? What about them? You came and you, and you graped. And, and robbed and murdered everybody. And I took all the damn land. You took it all for the, in, in, the joy, uh, uh, in the joy of your heart. You took everything. See, they didn't consider the latter end. These damn devils. Wow. Verse 10. But I will send a fire on the wall of Tyrus, which shall devour the palaces thereof. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, for three transgressions of Edom 
and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because he did pursue his brother with the sword and did cast off all pity, and his anger did tear perpetually, and he kept his wrath forever. You see, yet to this day, you know, uh, you know, then that video was speaking on what, 1957, the 60s or whatnot. You know, and I briefly spoke about the 70s. You know, I was born in the 80s. You know, I was born in 1980. You know, and what was it? Was it two or three, four years ago? Jake's still getting hung, strung up right here in North Carolina. Hmm? Right here in North Kakalaki. <laughs> Unbelievable, man. These people haven't changed and they never will change. This is why they need to be eradicated, as the scripture said. They need to be uh, bundled up and burned. After a thousand years of slavery in the kingdom that you're going to have to serve, hardcore, hardcore bondage. Then you're going to fly away like a dream. Malachi 2 verse 16. For the Lord Yahweh, the most high of Israel, saith that he, ha uh, that he hateth putting away for one covereth violence with his garment. Saith the Lord Yahweh of hosts, therefore take heed to your spirit that ye deal not treacherously. And Esau Edom, that's all he knows is treachery, mischief, murder. He's the hammer of the earth. He was built this way. Okay? But you are guilty as charged. Let's go. Verse 17. Yet he worried, uh, worried the Lord Yahweh with your words. Yet ye say, wherein have we worried him? See, when when ye say everyone that doeth evil is good in the sight of the Lord Yahweh, and he delighteth in them, or where is the most high of judgment? Okay. Oh, and this judgment, it's coming. It's coming. I remember uh, I got a quick story for you. Uh, we were all up. The whole family, you know, was up having a cookout or whatnot. Up at the parents' house, you know, my mother and a mother and father's house. Father and mother's house. Let me put that the other way. Okay? You know, uh, and every time is you know, I got two brothers anyway, but every time I get around the older brother, man, he's always got something to say about something. You know, and we got on the subject of uh of our captivity, and everybody agrees, and everybody agrees, except for him. He had the nerve to say, oh, man, and that was, that was so long ago. That was so long ago. You, you act like we are yet this day are not in our captivity, right? You know, when things happen in his own life and he can see and he understands exactly why they're happening. But he refuses to hearken to you. How about Shimmy? How was shy? He refuses to listen to the word. It's, it's terrible. But, you, uh, but you, you know, your family, they, they're not going to listen. Some of them are not. They're not going to listen. Let's go back here. Esau, Edom, you got a whole lot. You are guilty as charged. Rather, they will hear a forbear, whether our people will uh, uh, take heed to the words of Yahweh about Shimei Shai. It's still going to happen. See, the just shall live by faith. Psalm 73, verse 3. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For, their hand, for there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men. Neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore, pride can pass them as a chain. Violence cover them as a garment. Violence cover them as a garment. You saw him kick, kick, kicking Jake around and, and, and doing all kinds of different things. And before, it was worse than that. But, it, it, but then again, it's going to get worse. Jacob's trouble's coming. That's, we got to be prepared for these things. And understand that his rust have not all, to be, all the, uh, together been wiped away. The scripture said, never trust thine enemy. Oh, that was so long ago. Okay, sure. Huh. You forget about Tamir Rice? And I, I mean, there's so many examples. You know. But, you know, to your how about Shimei Al-Shab along the issues of death, right? Therefore, pride can pass them as a chain. Violence cover them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. See, they are corrupt speaking. Uh, they are corrupt and speak, uh, speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. See, what do you think? I, I, I don't, I don't want them here. I just don't like them. I don't, it don't matter. They, uh, 
Uh, they don't need, we can't have the police here 24 7. Well, who's the real criminal? Who's the real criminal? Esau Edom, you a thief and a vagabond. And you know what? I think they know it. It's, it's going to come back full circle on you, man. You're going to get burned, baby, in more than one way. Deuteronomy 32, verse 26. I say, I will scatter them into the corners. I will make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Okay? It's talking about us, right? Where, where it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, unless they, unless they should say, our hands is high, and the Lord Yahweh have not done all this. You see? You see that right there? Verse 28, for they are, they are a nation void of counsel. Neither is there any understanding in them. Ooh. You threw Esau. You are, you are finished. Two-thirds of our own people, you're finished. Even though you're going to come back in the loins, you know, of the elect, right? Of the one-third. Isaiah 47 and verse 1. Let's see, Salakia. Let's go back. That's beautiful. I could go back further, but I'll stay right here. I don't want to make it too long. You know, Jake got the attention span of a, of a goldfish, right? Isaiah 47, verse 6. I was wroth with my people. I had polluted mine inheritance. I had given them into the hand that did it show them no mercy. You see that? Because we went off. Yahweh Bashim Yahshah, he, he, uh, he uh, sent the hammer of the earth. He put us in punishment like any good father would do. When we when uh, when they disobey, you uh you put them under subjection, and uh, you punish them. Let's read it from the top. I was wroth with my people. I have polluted my inheritance. I have given them into the hand that did have showed them no mercy. Upon the ancient has thou verily heavily laid thy yoke. The ancient, right? Since before the foundations of the earth, verse seven, and uh, and thou saith. I shall be a lady forever. So <laughs> you see that their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever. Right. You see that. So that thou didst not lay thy things to thy heart. Neither didst thou remember the latter end of it. See, there's a there's a punishment for all this. You didn't remember the latter end. You don't you didn't consider the, the ending. You didn't consider the uh, 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 second Ezra's. Six and verse nine, right? You didn't consider that. Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Esau is the end of the world, remember? Huh? You've been deceived. You deceived your own damn self, man. I shall sit as a queen forever. Yeah, because he's a proud man, right? We're going to read about it. Revelation 17, verse one. And there came out of the seven angels, which had uh, the seven vows and talked, with me, Salakia, and talk with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. See that? He's not a keeper. Uh, he, she, the men, woman, and child, all these Edomites, man, they're not keepers at home. If so, they'd still be stuck in the clefts of the rock, grunting and moaning. You know, and still stinking. Verse two. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication, her philosophies, her uh, uh, her ways of life. You know, Babylon's books and uh, uh, um, witchcrafts and whoredoms. You see, you, you uh, one of the main examples is, uh, you know, what they call the Middle East over there. You know, uh, Esau, we, Edom went over there, destroyed everything, took out took uh, the goods, set us upon many waters. And what happened with their women? They went from the, their whole face covered, you know, everything covered. You couldn't see nothing but their eyes, and they would look down. And that, that, was, that was right. And now look at them. They're wearing pants, proud. All out in the open. You see? That's what happens when Esau Edom comes around. 
He switches everything up all the way from the garden. You shall, you, uh, your eyes will be open. You'll see, you will, uh, you'll, you'll be as a God. You see? Verse three. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and I saw a woman set upon a scarlet colored beast full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and 10 horns. Ooh. See that? What's that? The EU? Okay. All his counsel. Let's go. Um, we'll start right here. Habakkuk 2 and verse 4. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. His soul which is lifted up. Who, he's been lifted. Hey, he's been made the hammer of the earth, right? He's been lifted up. All right. Have not the potter have power over the clay? See, that's why they think they're above us and they're so much better. And, uh, you know, and all those things they had to say, we we uh, we can't keep the police here. Well, the police started out as uh, slave uh, capturers or whatever the hell you want to call them. I forget what it's called. Uh, slave patrol. Right. That's how the police started out. He, he wants to go into the they're taking the state's rights and the Constitution. Uh, come on, man. These Edomites, you are you're guilty as charged. Verse five, yea, also because he transgresseth by wine, he's a proud man, neither keeper at home, who enlarges his desire as hell, and is as death, and cannot be satisfied, but gather unto him all nations, and heapeth unto him all people. You see, he does all these things, the uh, World Economic Forum, uh, the, the, the CBs, the central banks. All of it. It's, it's all crafty. It's all crafty counsel. All of it. And all these nations have drank the wine of the wrath of her fornication, man. Micah 2, verse 2. And they covet fields and take them by violence. You know, did, did they just conveniently forget how they got here? This is why they don't want to teach CRT. Hmm? Think about it. Think about it for a moment. They don't want to teach the truth. They can't handle the truth. You see? They don't want to teach that. They want to teach you all kinds of different. The Columbus discovered this. They want to read you the diary of Anne Frank. Uh, 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 what, hey, what else do they teach y'all? All kinds of garbage. They want to teach you about uh, Egypt and how everybody was white. You know, everybody was Edomite. I just say white because, you know, that's what they say in schools. And these people haven't changed at all. They haven't changed a damn bit. They teach you nothing but lies. They teach you a curriculum that's, that's totally corrupt. My children come home, they got to unlearn all that garbage. Hmm? And I'm, I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to give you an example. No, none of these people have changed. They are wicked from birth. They've always been wicked from birth. Now... Uh, uh, randomly, uh, a couple days ago, my daughter, well, no, yesterday, my daughter came home and said they were all out in the hallway and a, a bunch of these Edomite, Edomites, you know, I said Edom, Edomites, <laughs> uh, they were, uh, for some reason saying, calling each other monkeys, right? You already know where this is going, don't you? You know, I like deaf to these Edomites, man. Anyway, they were calling each other monkeys. And uh, one, of, uh, one of the little girls, the little boys, one of them, may have been both, said, well, I'm not a monkey. I'm not a black person. Huh? And you tell me, you tell me they've changed and everything. Uh, that was a long time ago, man. They have the same sentiment today. They're the same people. You forget, you come back in the third and fourth generation. Some of these people are back already. And matter of fact, everybody's back in their lot right now. You know? And then they had the nerve to look at my daughter and say, oh, oh I hope that doesn't offend you. Well, what the hell are you, what, what are you thinking? Oh, I'm not, I'm not a monkey. I'm a, I'm not a black person. Well, I mean, you know, this, this, uh, the conversation of the wicked, man, this place is extremely vexing. See, but that's all right though. What they don't understand is, is they going to have to be up under the foot of my, uh, of my daughter's uh, husband in the kingdom. Woo. You see that? You're gonna have, have to be up under uh, uh, up under her, and she and she might meditate terror day and night. Lord knows she terrorizes me. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. 
Hey, she's a Judite, so you know how that is. Let's continue on with the lesson here. Monkey. A monkey, huh? Hmm. With thin lips and pink skin. Ain't that something? Unbelievable. Verse 3. <laughs> no, that was a joke. Oh, man. Sometimes you got to have, have a little levity to lighten up the situation. Because it's going to get more heavy and heavy and heavy. Man, man, how about him, y'all? He ain't playing with us, man. Verse 3. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, behold, uh, behold, against, uh, against this family do I devise an evil, as the, as the elders say, evil, from which ye shall not remove your necks, neither shall ye go haughtily. For this time is evil. Okay? <clears throat> so like you let's go here i'm almost i'm almost done i think i just got a couple more genesis 4 and verse 11 now art thou cursed from the earth which have opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand esau eat him he's bloody he's bloody he's a bloody man he's violent he's wicked evil upside down just like he was made to be man see he's played his part 100% perfect. Verse 12. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. A fugitive and a vagabond. You see? Verse 13. And Cain, which is the spirit of Esau, Edom. Huh? Was he not cursed? Uh-huh. And Cain Say unto the Lord, Yahweh, my punishment is greater than I can bear. And that's what Esau even still does, though he sold it carefully with tears, right? You could never get it back. You sold it for one morsel of meat. Ain't that something? Now, again, that one, that one dirty ass eater might want to go into the Constitution and, and all their documents and, and uh, the, uh, the things that they write down, which is uh, <clears throat> uh, what's the eater might consider written in stone, the law of the land, right? You got the nerve to put up four dirty ass Edomite faces on a damn mountain. To carve out your own faces on a mountain. Surely, I mean, come on, man. Anyway, I went into this. I was thinking about that when he said that. The history of three-fifths compromise, right? And look at them. They all standing up all proud. This is, we've consumed, we've done this and now this and that, Right. Now, uh, the, the Constitution or the, uh, let's see, the, the amendments or whatever, they, one of them damn, one of them Edomite documents they have that they hold, that they, they consider to be the law of the land, says that we are three-fifths of a person. So, uh, so the Israelites, right, the three-fifths of a person. So how are we included into it? We're not. We never were. See, that's the thing. With the death of the likes of my brother, uh, uh, my, uh, and, uh, you know, all kinds of other people, two-thirds. They don't understand. Baruch 3 and verse 8, we are yet this day in our captivity. In Deuteronomy, it says, thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled forevermore. We are up under curses. This is not our rest. Something is coming beyond this. And we can't wait for it. Let's go. Call hello, Yahweh, Shimei Yahweh, Right here, it says, the three-fifths compromise was an agreement reached by the state a delegates, right? It was an agreement reached by Esau Edom himself. He made up his own laws. And then it said, oh, we all agree that these people are three-fifths of a person. <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, at the 1787 uh, constitutional, there you go, convention, under the compromise, every enslaved American, hmm, would be counted as three-fifths of a person for taxation and representation purposes. This agreement gave the southern states more uh, electoral power that they would have, uh, would have had it, uh, it to enslave populations uh, been uh, ignored entirely, okay? Wow. So there's a three-fifths compromise, right? And you're not even supposed to be voting. See, I told you. And, and you know it, Esau Edom is completely upside down. So let's go into another one, one of his uh, stone writings, if you will. All men are created equal. Okay, sure. But wait a minute. 
Didn't they all get together and agree that the Israelites were three fifths of a person? You see, you see how backwards and uh, uh, slight a hand that is. The quotation, all men are created, I said created, <laughs> are created equal is a part of, of the sentence in the U.S. Declaration of Independence. Hmm. Penned by Thomas Jefferson in 1776 during the beginning of the American Revolution. And I don't need to read all that. You already know what it is. You see, they projected themselves onto us and then took our heritage, as it says in Micah 2 verse 2, right? Second Ezra 6 and verse 54. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all, and the people of whom thou hast chosen. See, they really, they're really nothing, and they know it. You know, the two-time losers, they don't know nothing. They don't know anything, but the one percenters, you know, your Gettys, the uh, Oppenheimers, and the uh, 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 Chicken Grubers, they know. They know exactly what's going on. They're going to try to escape, but your how about Shimei Al-Shah is going to snatch you up. You know, he said by the hands of my people. Verse 55, all this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. Uh-oh. See, now, now they got a problem. Huh? I thought, I thought you were a bunch of Christians. Verse 56, as for the other people, which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing, but be like unto spittle, and has likened them, uh, likened the abundance of them as a drop that falleth from a vessel. And what now? Let's let's keep reading. Verse fifty-seven. And now, O Lord, how these uh, uh, these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing, have become have begun to uh, begun Salakia. Wow, to be lords over us and to devour. Us. They showed us no mercy. Let's keep reading about these people that are nothing. Small dust of the balance right here, right? Hmm? Isaiah 40 and I was thinking 45, but I'm right here at it. 40 and verse 15. Behold, the nation the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted uh, and are counted as the small dust of the balance. Now you, you think about these scriptures. Visualize it. You put a little bit of dust on a balance, it ain't going to move. <coughs> like a drop that falls from a vessel. You don't, you don't give a damn about that little drop. It's nothing compared to the abundance of water that's in the vessel. Or whatever it is, whether it be strong drink or uh, wine or whatever. Small dust in the balance. Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very little thing. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn nor the beast thereof, sufficient for a burnt offering. All nations before him are as nothing. They are counted to him less than nothing in vanity. You see that? But what did he say about the Israelites? Let's read it. Deuteronomy 7, verse 6. For thou art a holy people, which means separate, unto the Lord Yahweh thy power. And the Lord Yahweh thy power have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. All people that are upon the face of the earth. Okay? Did that, you know what that just said? That said we're better than they are. And how about Shem Yahweh said it himself. Silver and gold. Joel 3 and verse 4. And you, and you, you Hamites, you ain't getting away with it neither. The other day in the store, I just I, that Hamite spirit is disgusting. It's disgusting, and they have a they have a pure hatred for us. Also, you can see it and you can feel it. Okay, and how how dare the the, uh, the a whole entire earth want to call us some damn Hamites? We ain't no Hamites. We better than the Hamites. Oh, doo doo eating Africans. And uh, in Africa, uh, that was called the land of Ham. Anyway. Unbelievable, man. It's so much confusion. And the Bible is setting everything straight. Joel 3 and verse 4. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, and all the coast of Palestine? Will ye render me a recompense? And if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? 
because ye have taken my silver and my gold. What? Hey, what does it say in Deuteronomy 7, verse 6? Huh? Y'all y'all are holy people. Y'all are better than everybody else. Because ye have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples my goodly and pleasant things. Therefore, Salakia, goodly and pleasant things, verse 6, the children of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians that ye might remove them far from their border. Behold, I will raise them out of the place where the ye have sold them and return your recompense upon your own head. Now, hold on. Wait a minute now. Time out. Isn't it talking about the Israelites? So who the hell are these 1948s? Who, who, who they, who that? Who are they? They're imposters. See, this never happened to them. See, your recompense is going to come upon your own head. Jeremiah 50 verse 33. Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. And all that took them captives held them fast, and they refused to let them go. Again, Baruch 3 and verse 8, we are yet this day in our captivity, and they refused to let us go. Okay? The scripture talks about Jacob is the former of all things, and they just walk around like, like they did every damn thing. When you did nothing. Okay? You did nothing. You're a bunch of, you're a bunch of lazy thieves and vagabonds, and you're going to pay for everything you've done. No matter what, you're going to pay for it. Exodus 21, verse 14. But if a man come presumptuously upon his neighbor to slay him with guile, thou shalt take him from mine altar that he may die. You see, verse 15. And he that smiteth his father or his mother shall be surely put to death. And he that stilleth a man and selleth him or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. You see that right there? Are we, hey, are we not yet this day in our captivity? Don't they refuse to let us go? Are we still here? When your holler shot comes back, are we still here? Are we, that we just going to magically let us, let us go back to, uh, uh, to, uh, to Israel? Let us go back to, uh, to Jerusalem. Hmm? I don't think so. All these prophecies must come to pass. Hopefully this lesson was edifying, giving all praise, honor, and glory to the heavenly father and his only begotten son, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Rekakwadash. Again, double honors to the apostles and elders, a great millstone of whom I learn from daily. Healthy shalom to the brothers that are out there doing the work in truth and sincerity. Okay? Every chance you get, Chant this place down. DTA and Kwam Yasharala. Wa a Bible ball. Boom. Shalom.